All right, guys. So, um, fortunately, I did this part of the video already yesterday. But when I went to the editing program from GoPro, their capture app, it only recorded one second of like five minutes, unfortunately. And I'm on my way to another job right now. But what I'm showing you guys, um, what I want to explain to you is this little oil level switch on Mate. If you guys own one or if you work on them, very few people know this, but they're obsolete from Mate. Mate is no longer putting low oil level switches on their units. And all it is is a safety sensor. If the machine runs low on oil, the sensor turns it off. If you buy a new one today from 2016, like mid-2016, and so on, your unit does not have the safety sensor on it. It will not. They no longer put it on. Um, do I really like the fact that they took it off? Yes and no. I like that they did away with this particular safety sensor, but I do believe that they should have kept a safety sensor. The reason why they did away with this one entirely is because it's just so finicky from Mate. This one, this one sensor, it's it's had nothing but problems, and I can't tell you guys how many times I've replaced them. I literally have, I literally have a oil pan, you know, like when you drain your your the oil in your car. I literally have one of those full of these sensors. And so, as you guys can see, it's a totally different time of the day, and the fucking camera did it again, where it just cut off. Uh, really don't know what the hell's going on with it. I hope this doesn't continue to happen. But, um, you know, I really don't like that Matei did away with the sensor entirely. The way they look at it is, is that they got rid of the low oil level sensor, but they still have a high temperature sensor. So if the machine does run low on oil, it's gonna cause the machine to run hot. If it runs hot, there is a temperature sensor to kick it off. Now, on the basic models like the ones that you've seen, even the newer ones now, they only have one sensor and I've already seen it happen on the, the higher end units, the ones that are all enclosed, the AC units. I have seen those where they they have both the oil temperature sensor and the air temperature sensor. Because remember, when you compress air, it gets hot, basic physics. So if the oil gets too hot, the air gets too hot. So on those bigger units, the higher end units that have the, the PLCs in them, if the air gets too hot, it'll kick off. However, I've already done it once where I've had to warranty a whole air in because it ran low on oil, it caused the machine to run hot, the oil temperature sensor failed, and the air temperature sensor failed. And the machine never picked it up. And it just ran it to the dirt till the thing fucking failed. And that was it, it was gone. And we had to warranty a whole air in, unfortunately. Um, so I'm not really a big fan of what Matei did, and honestly, it, it's really disappointed me in the manufacturer. You know, because I just see it being a bigger problem now than ever before. You know, I think it'll be fewer problems, but it's gonna be catastrophic problems in the end, really. Um, but without further ado, without further ado, I'm tired of, of re-explaining everything, because you know, when I start driving, I'm not really staring directly at the camera I'm paying attention to where I'm going so then by the time I'm done I realized okay the camera shut off but before it does it again without further ado here's the video and what we are doing now to just combat all these these faulty oil filters because for this customer on this unit I've already done it three times the customer is tired of it failing we are tired of it failing we've already talked to them saying hey this thing's fucking obsolete now. Do you really want to continue to put it on the machine? They said, no, go ahead and bypass it. We'll run it as is. All right, then fine. So, hope you guys enjoy the clip and uh, 
Sorry for all this jumping scene through scene. I think I'm more annoyed by it than you guys, but. Okay, guys. So, I'm gonna have to speak up because that deer that's gonna be running. Um, but basically, I don't know how well you guys will be able to see this. Here is my little cheat sheet that I had written out, and I said, you know, fuck losing the paper all the time. Took a picture of it. Right here, you can see number one and number two is this spot right here. This is number one, and that's number two right here. That's our little oil level switch. So all we are gonna do is just take a little screwdriver.
Okay, so as you guys can see, the solution to this problem is not that difficult. Um, there's really not a whole lot to it. You know, as long as you guys saw the video, that's really how long it took in real time to, to fix the problem. Um, you know, I talked to the customer again about the whole situation. Remember, I did come do this job on Friday. And as you can see, there's quite a mess underneath the unit. Um, it's all oil that leaked out on Friday. And I did the best I could to clean it up. I don't have any of that that floor sweep on my truck but I know some of you I know what some of you guys are thinking well Benny shouldn't you clean that stuff up it's oil and you know it's on the customer's property should you clean it up yeah I should but you know what it's not my job to go buy floor sweep after I've already requested it numerous amounts of times from my company that I need this stuff on my truck at all times to clean these kinds of messes they haven't given it to me so I'm not gonna bother with that kind of stuff I'm, I'm done fighting for things like that from from my company so that's, that's the reason why there's still a mess there. I wiped up as much of it as I could with regular rags, but regular rags don't lift oil off the ground. So, back to the, the main issue. Bypass the sensor, ran it for the customer, the customer's happy, they're gonna leave it as is. No more dealing with this low oil level sensor problem. Um, only thing we will be doing is coming back to put a cap where that sensor goes that you guys saw. We're just gonna cap that in, put some Teflon tape and, and pipe dope, make sure it's really sealed tight future no oil leaks out of it again and just leave it as is um, it's really really ridiculous to replace the sensor this many times four times on one machine you know and for any of you guys if I don't know how it's gonna turn out on the video till I do all the editing I don't know how well that picture came out on my iPad of my little cheat sheet that I mean that cheat sheet has the relays what each relay is what it's exactly for um, and it shows in numeric order what each one of those wires is and what they go to so for any of you guys that are out there that work on this kind of stuff definitely take a screenshot of that um, if you want to you can private message me if you ever need that kind of stuff I can get you cheat sheets on this kind of equipment and it really makes life a breeze when you're trying to solve a problem and solve it fast you know especially like when you come up and you're like oh what are these two wires and you, know, you got a cheat sheet right there and rather than you know going through a schematic and looking at everything and you know flipping page by page okay now where are these two wires still going to figure out where what the heck they're connected to I, I love things like that where it's I can look at it and be like okay here's wire four and five. Oh, there's the high temperature sensor perfect so if you guys need anything like that on this unit it's a an ERC from a day if you guys need anything like that private message me private message me like I talk too fast guys but I'm in a hurry private message me and I can send you a uh, an email of that if you guys ever need it. Um, but please like, comment, share, subscribe, and I'll catch you all in the next one.